Hi right, guys, I'm Lawski and welcome back to It Moves. And now we're gonna play for hopefully longer than the last video which was about 10 minutes. And hopefully this video doesn't get copyright claim like the last one. Nothing I could really do about that. Which the brightness was higher. And also hopefully this video actually records the first time. Okay, not only are we in a maze, but we're in one that's really dark. Okay, there are actually buttons here. So this one here is first. That one is in second. So both the smiling, smiling faces. And then that one. Okay, looks like I actually figured something out. Then we could go down here. Good one. But the exit isn't actually open here. Wanted poster. Some kind of machinery. Yep, this was definitely going back to the beginning. Okay, I don't want to look at that poster there. I wouldn't want to either. Nothing of interest, I think. Our vision just became red. Like our vision is already pretty terrible. Oh, 
side of the way. Maybe the air is still stuffy.
when you are waiting from a deep sleep to find something moving or stirring. I can, it can take a few moments for you to truly understand what, what is happening. The fog of sleep hangs over your eyes and ears even when I'm lucid. Something was moving there. There was no doubt about that. At first, I wasn't sure what it was. Everything was dark, almost pitch black, but there was enough light creeping in from the outside to outline that room. Two thoughts appeared in my mind almost simultaneously. The first was that my parents were in bed because the rest of the house lay both in darkness and silence. The second thought turned to no the noise, a noise which had obviously awoken me. That was it, bed sheets rustling in the dark and someone breathing, as if some disturbed sleeper was, attempted, was attempting to get all too comfortable in the bottom bunk. I lay there in disbelief thinking that the noise was either my imagination or just perhaps my pet cat feeding somewhere, finding somewhere comfortable to spend the night. It was then that I noticed my door shut as I it had been when I as I had fallen asleep. Perhaps my mom had checked in on me and the cat had sneaked in my room. Yes, that had to be it. I turned to face the wall, closing my eyes in the vain hope that I could fall back to sleep. As I moved the rustling noise from from me ceased. I thought I must have disturbed my cat. But I quickly but quickly I realized that the visitor in the bottom front was much less mundane than my cat. Trying to see a much more sinister. As if alerted to and disgruntled by my presence, the disturbed sleeper began to toss into her violently, like a child having a tantrum in her bed. I could hear the sheets twist and turn with increasing ferocity. ferocity. Fear then gripped me, not like the subtle sense of unease I had experienced earlier, but now potent and terrifying. My heart raced as my eyes panned, scanning the almost impenetrable darkness. I let out a cry. As most young boys do, I instinctively shouted on my mother. I could hear something stare on the other side of the house. But as I began to breath a sigh of relief that my parents were coming to say, the bump suddenly starts to shake violently as it gripped by an earthquake, earthquake scraping against the wall. I can hear the sheets above me thrashing around as if tormented, as if tormented by malice. I did not want to jump down to safety as I feared the thing in the bottom bump would reach out and drag me, pulling me into the darkness so I saved white knuckles clenching my own blanket like a shroud of protection. The white seemed like an eternity. What's wrong? Did you have a bad dream? I cried and my mother consoled me. Tears of fear followed by re release steam streamed down my face. Yet through all the horror and relief I did not tell her why I was so upset. I cannot explain it, but it was as though whatever had been in that bunk would return, if I even so much as spoke of it. Whatever, whenever the truth, whatever that was the truth, I do not know, but as a child I felt as if that unseen menace remained close, listening. My mother lay in the empty bunk, promising to stay there until morning. I remember the next day wanting to go anywhere but be anywhere but in that suffocating room. It was a Saturday and I played outside quite happily with my friends. Although our house was not large, we were lucky to have a long, slopping garden in the bag. 
we played there often as much as it was overgrown and we could hide in the bushes. Climb in the huge, what is that word? In, in the huge tree, which tower above all else, and easily imagine ourselves in the throes of grand adventure. As fun as it was, occasionally my eye would turn to that small window in my ordinary slight and innocuous. But for me, the, that thin boundary was a looking glass into the strange cold pocket of dread. Outside the lush green surroundings of our garden filled with the smiling faces of my friends. Inside the feeling of something in that room watching me play waiting for the night when I would be alone, eagerly filled with hate. It may sound strange to you, but by the time my parents ushered me back into that room for the night, I said nothing. I didn't protest. I didn't even make an excuse as to why I couldn't sleep then. I still, still felt that this thing would be enraged if I so much as spoke of it. Another night came. On to chapter 3 we go. I don't even know how many chapters this game has. Save, yes. Definitely something for me to look up. If I don't complete the game in this video. But maybe this is the last chapter, I don't know. like the lights on the runway at the airport. A picture of some kind of green landscape. The picture is in too bad shape to make out. Any details? Spikes there. Spikes there. But, some kind of machine. Some kind of machine. A different some kind of machine. There's actually a lever here. I feel like one of those sets of spikes had to have disappeared. Whatever's happening, stop. How are you? Okay, there was a level there. Those spikes are still down.
at least now. We haven't even been over here yet. Okay, these spots were down. Check out these areas that actually still have spikes. There's quite a lot of them. So we're going to be here literally flipping levers for quite some time. past my own nose. Like still down.
and the monsters in this room again. That's a red liquid pouring out. Anything else you want to tell me? Because we did just hit that level. So you think it would be something out here? actually lost at this point. actually do know what to which to still had spikes down. That's a new one. That should be about the final one check maybe. Bottom left side is where we need to go. What did that do? Can I not get out of here? Okay, the spikes appeared behind me that time. It's funny how certain words can remain hidden from your mind, no matter how blatant or obvious they are. One word came to me that that night, lying in the, the lying in the darkness alone, fighting the world, a rotten chain to the atmosphere, in the atmosphere, a thickening of the air. It, if something had displaced it, as I heard the first casual twist of the bed sheets below. 
the first anxious increase in my heartbeat at the realization that something was once again in the bottom bunk. That word, a word which had been sent into exile, filtered up through my consciousness, breaking free of all repression, gasping for air, screaming, etching, and carving itself into my mind. Ghosts. As the dark came to me, I noticed that my unwelcome visitor had ceased moving. The bed sheets lay calm and dormant, but they had been replaced by something far more hideous. A slow, rhythmic, rasping breath heaved and escaped the thing below. I can imagine its chest rising and falling with each sound wheezing and garb garbled breath. A shud I shudder and hope beyond all hope that it will leave without currents. The house lay as it had the previous night in a thick blade blanket of darkness. Silence prevailed, all but but for the perverted breath of my as yet unseen bump. I lay there terrified. I just wanted this thing to go to leave me alone. What did it want? Then something unmistakably chilling transpired. It moved. So these are the credits. It moved in a different way from before. When it threw itself around in the bottom bunk, it seemed unrestrained, without purpose, almost animalistic. For that thing lying there in the darkness, that thing would seem intent on terrorizing a young boy calmly and nonchalantly and nonchalantly sat up. It labored breathing. Its labored breathing had become louder. Now only a mattress and a few flimsy wooden slats separated my body from the unearthly breath of life. I lay there, my eyes filled with tears. I fear of which one, which mere words cannot relate to, or anyone else curse through my veins. I would not have believed that this fear could have been heightened, but I was so wrong. I imagined what this thing would look like sitting there listening from my from below my mattress, hoping to catch the slightest hint that I was awake. away. Imagination then turned into an unnerving reality. It began to touch the wooden slates which my mattress on. It seemed to caress them carefully running without what I imagined to be fingers and hands across the surface of the room. Then with great force it parted angrily between the two slats and the mattress. Even though through the padding it felt as though someone had visibly stuck their fingers into my side. I let out an almighty cry and the wheezing and the shaking and moving them in the bunk below the fire and in kind by violently vibrating the bunk as it had done the night before. Small plates of paint pounded onto my blanket from the walls as the frame of the bed stretched along it backwards and forwards. Once again, I was bathed in light, and there stood my mother, loving as caring as she always was, with a comforting hug and calming words which eventually subdued my hysteria. Of course, she asked what was wrong, but I could not say. I dare not say. One word over and over again. Night. The, this pattern of events continued for weeks, if not months. Night after night, I would awaken to the sound of rustling sheets. Each time I would scream so that it would not provide this abomination with the time to pride and feel for me. With each cry, the bed would shake violently, stopping with the arrival of my mother who would spend the rest of the night in the bottom bunk, seemingly unaware of the sinister force torturing her son nightly. Along the way, I managed to feign illness a few times and come up with other less than truthful reasons for sleeping in my parents' bed. But more often than not, I would be alone for the first few hours of each night in that place. The room where the light from my side did not sit right alone with that thing. With time you can become 
desensitized to almost anything. No matter how horrific. I had come to realize that for whatever reason, this thing could not harm me when my mother was present. I'm sure the same would have been present said, said for my father, but as loving as he was, waking him from sleep was almost impossible. Waking me, on the other hand, was no trouble at all, thanks to the nightmares. Chapter 4 Save here Yeah, we've been recording for quite the amount of time I don't think I can complete this in this video But there'll be a third episode So be sure to check that out Whenever it's posted Maybe in a few days. 